Say, God is good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please take your seat. I want to welcome each and every one of you to this leaders and workers meeting. It is the first in 2024. Praise the Lord. And I know that before the end of February, we will come out with a program of our leaders meeting on one side and workers meeting on another side for the rest of the year. Praise the Lord. So you can be able to plan your programs. This one was not duly handled in terms of communication, but I do believe that from next week, a lot of things will be communicated on time. So we will be having a lot of this type of meeting in the year. When we meet like this, it helps us to assess our performance and where we are. In the schools, they take exam to assess, praise the Lord. In ministry, we get together and discuss what we are doing and how we are doing it. Praise the Lord. So there will be more of this going forward in 2024. And this is almost like equivalent of taking exams in school to get to the next level. Hallelujah. The question is always is that how do you know? How do you know you are doing well? Praise the Lord. In one of the meetings that I was privileged to have with Pastor Chris, I asked him, I said, sir, sir, how is my work? How is my work? Amen. Because he was my commander in chief and his assessment of my work is important to me because I want to get better. Praise the Lord. I didn't ask that question hoping to get um, a certificate of performance from him. I asked that question because I wanted him to tell me how I can get better. And pastor smiled and he looked at me and said, he said, Pastor Alpha, I like the quality, but I would also like to have more quantity. Very, very wise answer he gave to me. Praise the Lord. And he didn't say more. He said, I like the quality, but I would like to have more quantity of it. And that was more than enough for me. Amen. And I went on to do more. What would have been a problem for me would have been to say that I don't like the quality and it is the quantity that you have given. That would have been a problem. But when he said to me, I like the quality. I like the quality. The, the question is, if you were to ask me the same question, what would I say? If you were to ask me that question, what would be my answer? Praise the Lord. Working in a local church helps you become better if you understand why you are doing it. You get better in service. You get better in application. A lot of people have not made progress in their lives because their mind is blocked. Their mind is blocked. And so when you look at their work, they neither have the quality nor the quantity and they refuse to be affected 
by the ministry. When you come to a local church and the local church does not affect you, improve you, you are in the wrong church. Any church that does not inspire you to grow, challenge you to grow, challenge you to get better, you are in the wrong church. We are meant to go from glory to glory. Even though some of you are resistant to growth, you have made up your mind the way you do things and that's the way you want it, and so nobody can make you grow. Nobody can make you grow. You take your pace and you move at your pace. Praise the Lord. But it's not supposed to be like that. When a student goes into school, you check the performance of the student. Is it not true? And then from the performance, you can know if the school is giving you service delivery or not. When you enter God's family church and you listen to the message, you listen to the message. The message is your challenge. You are to become like what you hear. You are to become like the word that comes to you. The message is not theories for us. Moses said the word is your life. Very correctly, very truly, the word of God is our life. That's what Moses said. And until you take hold of the word, the word will not take hold of you. I've seen the life of many. Nothing has changed in their lives. Nothing has changed. Praise the Lord. Nothing has changed. They talk and act the way they've always done. And in some cases, they've even become worse in some cases. And so they now mixed their worldliness with the word. And so they create a, a, a bitter mix. Instead of them being better, they become worse. And so you do, ah, uh, you do selective theology. You pick and choose the ones you think you, is for you. And then you reject the ones that you think you think. <clears throat> so you are the judge of what is good for you and what is not good for you. You are the judge of it. You are the one that decides what is good and what is not good for you. So then what need do you have for a teacher? What need do you have? What use do you have for a teacher? When you come to a point where you are the one that make a decision and say, I take this, I don't take this, I like this, I don't like it, then you are your own teacher. You are unteachable. And that is the biggest problem when you come to a point where you have selective education. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know what you don't know. You wouldn't know. And so, you must approach the scriptures with an open mind. You must be open to learn. You must be open to change. You must be open. Uh, uh, for instance, for instance, when you join this ministry from another ministry, you may have been a pastor where you are coming from. And so, for whatever reason, you decided to join. Now, as much as we welcome you into the body of Christ, but you don't know us, you don't understand us, you don't come in and start making corrections. 
You don't come in and start changing things. You don't come in and start complaining because you don't understand. Every ministry have their calling. We have our calling. We are not deliverance ministry, even though we believe in deliverance, but, but we are not a deliverance ministry. Praise the Lord. We are not. We are not prosperity preachers, even though we believe in prosperity. Are you getting it now? We are not the prosperity preachers, but we believe in prosperity. We are not holiness preachers, but we believe in holiness. What is the difference? I'll tell you what is the difference. The difference is that when you take a narrow point, a narrow part of the scriptures, and make it the totality of your ministry, that's the difference. You said that you believe in holiness, and everything you do is about sin and holiness, sin and holiness. And so you raise people on a very narrow format, on a very narrow platform. And so the people don't care about anything else. They are looking at sin, whether this is sin, whether it's not. So you become sin conscious. That is holiness message. Just like those into deliverance ministry. Deliverance is about demon, everything. You ascribe everything to demon. Every problem is demon, 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 demon. And so you become demon conscious. These are only part and parcel of the gospel. They are just small parts. And I love what Papa Hagin said. He said, stay in the middle in all things. Stay in the middle. He said, don't go to the extreme. Uh, some people, in going to the extreme, they've gone into error. When you believe that the reason why your business is not doing well is because there is a devil. And so you began to look for deliverance. And you said, my business has not been doing well, and I know it's a devil uh, because... Uh, no! Before you blame the devil, have you done a scan of your spirit? Scan your spirit first. Amen? Who are you? It is true that the devil may have contributed, but who opened the door for the devil? The lifestyle that opens the door for the devil to afflict you cannot make the devil responsible. It is the one that opened the door. If the goat comes into a house and eats the yam, do you blame the goat or do you blame the person that left the door open? Come on. Who do you blame? You have first questions that who left this gate open? Is it not true? If it was not open, the goat wouldn't have come in. So it is very much the same. Before you blame the devil for attacking your business, attacking your family, attacking your finances, who opened the door? And our spiritual life, the good thing is that nobody can open the door except you. Nobody. So, when you have your mind made up, when you have your mind made up, it becomes difficult to teach you. It becomes difficult to educate you. You, you, you are a worker in church. There should be a difference between you and members of the church. There should be. There should be a difference the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you act, there should be a difference. When you are a worker, it means that you are a disciple. Praise the Lord. And so your conduct, your character, your integrity is on display. It's on display for the community. It's on display for the church, everybody else in the church. It's on display wherever you go. And that is why he said everybody becomes like their church. Jesus said it's good enough for a student to be like his master. 
And so if you are not there, you are missing it. And you need to be there. That's what Jesus said. That's the example that Jesus gave us. Not that you become like you are church. No, you become like your teacher. I think there was something. Mommy and I were talking yesterday. Mommy said something. I said, don't say that. And so when she was, I said, no, don't say it. I said, because you need to talk the way I talk. I told her just yesterday. I said, don't speak like that. I said, because you should speak the way I speak. And that's the truth. Just yesterday. And if a wife does not get to function at the level of the spirituality of the husband, she is missing something. No, something is wrong. Did you hear what I said? If a wife does not function, maybe not 100%, but to a large degree, to a large extent, you handle things the way you see things, you conduct things the way your husband would have done it. And so, now we are talking about a man that Christ is his head. We are talking about spiritual authority here now. We are not talking about just anybody called husband. Are you, do you understand? And so, you become a reflection of your husband. And so, who is the best wife? The best wife is the one that the husband holds in trust. And say, so whether I'm there or not, she will follow my pattern. And unfortunately, many Christian wives don't even have this understanding. And they are pushing their own agenda in marriage. They are pushing who they are. They are pushing who they want to be. And it, it doesn't take long before they run into problems. They always run into problem. You will run into problem. Because first, you fight against your husband, not physically. You lose trust. If your husband travels and gives an assignment, while he's on the way, he will be calling steadily to be sure that you are doing what he asks you to do. That's because he doesn't trust you. That's the truth. And so over time, you've always tried to do it different from what he said. Different from what he said. Different. And that's actually the, the, the issue with our relationship with Jesus. We are to be like Christ. Christ-likeness. Christianity is about Christ-likeness. We think like Christ. We walk like Christ. We act like Christ. We do everything like Christ. That's what Christianity is all about. That's why it's called Christianity. Christ, Christ, Christ in it. Christ in it. That's Christianity. So whatever you do is Christ-like. Whatever you say is Christ-like. When you miss it, even heaven will know that you made a mistake. Do you think that heaven, anything takes heaven by surprise? You can live your life in such a way that even when you make the simplest mistake, before you pray, Lord, forgive me, the Lord knows that this was by mistake because inwardly, the Lord knows you as one that does not walk in disobedience. And so the Lord, even himself, before you say the Lord knows, the Lord would have made that provision for you. Why? Because the Lord can say, in your heart, in your heart. David was not a perfect man. David shed a lot of blood, so much blood. But in the heart of David, there was something right about him. And so, when you are a worker in church, you ought to be a better Christian than others. When you stand here, whether it is to minister, other, you need to know you are representing Christ. Whatever you say. Especially, like now, this meeting is being transmitted. Whatever I say stays there now. It stays there. And so you don't come here to share what you think or your experience. No, you come here to share the word of God. Praise the Lord. And so you stay focused on that word of God. Why? This is not man's pulpit. This is the pulpit of Jehovah. 
There are some other churches where the pastors claim the pulpit. This is the pulpit of the Lord, dedicated unto the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord proceeds from here. Nothing else. Nothing else. This is not a place for you to preach against your enemy. This is not the place where you start calling them. No, this is a place where you minister the word of the Lord directly to the people of God. You can correct people, you can rebuke people from the pulpit according to the word of the Lord. That is okay. Because Jesus is the same. Praise the Lord. So when you come into God's family church, your first thing is to understand what is God's family church? What do Christ, God's family church believe in? When you see gospelology everywhere, you hear gospelology, what does gospelology mean? That is the beginning of your understanding of the vision. God calls every man and gives every man a vision. Every vision is futuristic. You walk towards your vision. No vision is 100% achieved if it's from God. Praise the Lord. No vision is what? 100% achieved if it's from God. Because you keep working on it progressively until you make heaven. And so, you don't just see it. For instance, members can just sit, but when you come to a level where you are now a worker, a HOD, you need to understand what gospelology is. Not just to say it, but to live it. What is gospelology? What is the vision of the ministry? Do you know it? Can you be an ambassador of this ministry? Praise the Lord. Can you be an ambassador? Open to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 from verse 14. Shout hallelujah. Our God is good. Are we there? The Bible said, speaking about John the Baptist and his ministry and his vision, speaking about who? John the Baptist, about what? Ministry and his vision. Praise the Lord. Verse 14, he will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. Verse 15, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, he is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. Filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. Praise the Lord. Anything we see in the Bible, we can take it and we can lay claim of it. And so it is possible for a woman to bring forth a child that will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth, even from where the mother's womb. It is possible. It is only godly women that can bring forth such godly seed. Only. And so the life of godliness you live can affect your unborn child. That is true. That is true. Malachi chapter 2 tells us that God expects godly seed from our union. Did we not read it the other day? Right? You remember that? God expects godly seed from our union. Now, ungodly parents cannot raise godly seed. Unfaithful parents cannot raise godly seed. Because you cannot give what you are not. And if you are married, and you are a Christian, and you fail to raise, to raise godly seed, you are a failure in life completely. It doesn't matter what you achieve. It doesn't matter the money you have. The moment you are a Christian and you got married and you gave birth to children and the children were not godly seed, you have failed in life completely. It doesn't matter what else you achieve. We need to begin to teach Christians and believers what is important in the sight of God, not in the sight of the world. It is better for you to be single than to be married and bring forth ungodly children. 
it is better to be single. Are you hearing me? You need to understand the way things work in the kingdom. So it is possible for you to give birth to children that are filled with the Holy Ghost and with power right in the womb. Right in the womb. Is there. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. Verse 16. He will bring back, this is his assignment of John the Baptist. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. Everybody read verse 16. He will. Again. And he will go on, he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of what? Elijah. To do what? To turn the hearts, parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready. I want you to underline that. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That is the vision of this ministry. That is what we are for. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Many of you have not understood why the word of God is so strong for us here. Many of you have not understood why we don't joke with the word of God. Many of you don't understand why discipline is so important. We are not trying to build up members. We are trying to make people, to make ready a people for the Lord. That is what the Lord asked me to do. If you read again, verse, he says, verse 17, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit of power to turn the hearts of the parents to their children. That is restoring family order and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. That is talking about restoring the, 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 the family value system in Christ. And so when we are God's family church, God's family church means restoration of the Christian family value. Restoration of the Christian family value system. What is our Christian family value system? To raise godly seed unto the Lord. 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 To raise Timothys. To raise Titus. The Bible talks about Timothy, the faith of the grandmother, the faith of the mother, and the faith that was imparted into the young Timothy. That is the way it should be. That is the way it should be. And so when Timothy had Paul preached, it was very easy for him to be attracted and drawn to the gospel. It was very easy. Because the grandmother and the mother, they have trained him in the way of the Lord. Not only that, they have given him a legacy, a legacy of faith. And so, Timothy grew up as a son of God. And then he became a son of uh, uh, Apostle Paul. And Paul wrote about him, I have no one like him who we care for the well-being of the church. Who we care. Many of you, you are not even responsible. You are not even reliable. You don't even have integrity. What is integrity? Integrity is conduct according to expectation in a very summarized way. Somebody gave you a car to use. And you use that car and you return that car in the condition it was given to you, not less. In fact, you added value. When you were returning it, you cleaned it. That's integrity. Some years ago, we were traveling to the, to the village and our flight was delayed. So eventually, when we arrived in Portacourt, when we arrived in Patakot, we took a car. By the time we got to Abba, it was so late. I called my uncle, 
My uncle told me, he said, please, we should not move any further anymore. He asked me, where are we? I said, we are in Sososo Place. He said, please, stop there. Go to Sososo Place. That is my daughter's house. Please, you people should stay there for the night. Don't go anywhere because a bar is not a good place to be going around. I think that was already about 9 or 10 o'clock in the night. So he said, don't move. Now, it wouldn't have been my option to stay in anybody's house. I don't care who you are. I would rather take hotel. But the instruction that don't move, don't go anywhere else. So the daughter's house happened to be close by, and the driver knows the place. And so he dropped us there. And so as we got there, they, they opened the master bedroom for us. Praise the Lord. And we were grateful to have it for that night, just to pass through the night. Now, my point is that as we entered into that master bedroom, we didn't touch anything. We just stayed on the bed, got up, brushed our teeth, cleaned up, and all that, got ready. We didn't touch, tamper with anything. Neither did we look into anything. That's integrity. And so we were grateful to use that room. In normal circumstances, and we never enter a room like that. Out in, for what? But, but as it happened, I have to use it. And so as I entered, we were disciplined. We were disciplined. We touched nothing. We looked into nothing. And if you ask me how that room looks like, I can't remember. You know why? I was just passing through. That is trust. And I don't think I ever talked about that place and all that till now. Because it was just given to me. And we used it and we moved on. That is it. Many of you, you lack integrity. Somebody will give you a room. Before you know it, you start using all the things there. Carelessness and lawlessness. Now I'm telling you the truth. Somebody say, okay, you can manage here. It's not your place. It's not your place. Before you know it, you venture into the person's personal things. No, what kind of person are you? No. Before you know, you're wearing the person first cap. You said, are we not? You are lawless. To raise a people unto the Lord. Do you know what a servant of the Lord is? He says, anywhere you enter, and the, and the son of peace stay there. He said, your peace will stay there. So anywhere you enter, and peace is given to you, you should make sure peace stays there. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. When you are a worker in church, you are an ambassador for that church. We are the ambassadors of Christ, but workers in the church are, are, ambassadors of that church. When members say something and you a worker say it, you are own that is a worker will travel faster. Why? Because you are a worker. Some of you, the way you manifest, the way you talk, the way you act, sometimes I will look at you from a distance and say, how long? How long? No, how long? He says to, ah, to raise a people for the Lord, to make a people ready for the Lord. And so we are not a church that is seeking for signs and wonders. We are not a church for prophetic. No, we are not all that. Did you ever read that John the Baptist did no miracles? But everything he said was truth. Miracles and truth, which one do you prefer? The truth cannot lie. Miracles can lie. You need to understand the calling of this ministry. We are called to the truth. But in the truth, there is miracle. In the truth, there is healing. In the truth, there is deliverance. In the truth, there is peace. 
in the truth as prosperity. But we are not prosperity church. But we are a church based upon the truth. What is the truth? God's word is the truth. God's word is the truth. So our conduct, remember, the Bible says, John the Baptist, the, he was to bring back the people of Israel to the Lord their God. Who is the Israelite? No, who is the Israelite? You are not answering me now. Who is the Israelite? Are they not the people of God? Uh, they are supposedly the people of God, right? So how is it then that John the Baptist now was called to bring them back to the Lord their God? Is that not a conflict? How is it that John the Baptist was called to gather them and bring them back to the Lord if they are already the people of God? And that is what God's family church is all about. To gather those that has once been Christians and bring them back to the Lord. Those that were church members to bring them back to the Lord. And that is why this ministry cannot be popular. That is the same reason why John the Baptist was not popular. Because you are bringing people from lawlessness to the truth. Many of you are, So it is, it is difficult for you to be a worker in this church and walk in lawlessness. It will be difficult. Those are the things I take very personal. And I say, you are a worker. You should know. You should know. You should be an example. Paul said to Timothy, be an example of the believer. Praise the Lord. He says to Timothy, you have followed, carefully followed my doctrine. How can you call yourself a son of the pastor or a daughter of the pastor? You don't follow his doctrine carefully. No, how is it? How does it connect? I would rather have no children at all than to have those that will not follow my doctrine. At the end of the day, what have you achieved? Nothing. 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 You can have children because others are having. That's for you. That's your vision. But God has given me a vision to raise a people ready for him. And so, whether my wife, whether my sons, whether my daughter, the most important thing in, in your life for me is that you follow me as I follow Christ. Simple. I don't care about anything else. Because the care of things will deprive me from Christ. I don't care. Listen. I don't care if I live in face me and face you. And thank God I'm not living there. But I don't care if I live there. As long as I am fulfilled in Christ's service, what will it profit a man? You gain the whole world and you lose your soul. Then what do you have? No, then what do you have? Many of you, you don't understand the vision. As a worker, you need to understand the vision. And I thank God that this is being recorded because every HOD, you need to play this message to your department at least once or twice in a month. You people need to get together and listen to it. It is a reminder of what God is expecting out of you. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? It reminds you of God's expectation to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. We are not a deliverance ministry. We are not the prophetic ministry. Some people advertise all those things. I know it. And it's okay. Every man should pursue what God has given to them. Praise the Lord. Every man should pursue. But for us here, when you say that you are a worker, working with me to serve the Lord, you need to understand that gospelogy is application of the word. For us to manifest the divine truth. Manifest, application of the word. John 15 verse 7. If you abide in me and my word abide in you. He said you will ask whatever you desire. It will. So we, 
we are not we are not praying and fasting ministry but we pray and fast are you getting it and the reason why the vision is so important for you is so that it will reduce your prayer point if you live right you will pray short Amen. Workers quarreling in their department. And that is why when I see the worship team arguing another, it shocks me to the bone. When I even hear the way people that came to rehearse, when I even hear the, the, the way they are talking, their voice and all that, sometimes I will be there. I will be listening to them. They don't know. It shocks me. And I say, how can this work? Don't they know that there is no rehearsal in the spirit realm? There's no rehearsal. Do we re rehearse for service? Everything you do, you may call it rehearsal. There are, I think, um, was it in Munich or, yeah, even it has happened here where just rehearsal as I came in and the power of God came and the anointing began to move. People feel under the anointing. There is no rehearsal in the spirit realm. Everything you do, you do unto the Lord. So what you will do on a service day, you must do the same on rehearsal. Your conduct on service day must be... By the way, what is rehearsal? What is rehearsal? Hello? Those that do it should tell me. Levi, what is rehearsal? Eh? Is that what it is? Pastor Zeke, is that what it is? Hmm? You see, we, we need to understand why. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know what they call mock exam? What is mock exam? <laughs> what is mock exam? They call it mock exam, right? Mock you. If you fail it, <laughs> praise the Lord. If you fail the mock exam, they can tell you that you will as well as fa uh, fail the main exam. Do you understand? So in rehearsal, that's mock service. If you fail there, you will fail on Sunday. And I have seen them, the, the rehearsal was rowdy on Saturday. And on Sunday, I knew what I would get. You see different people that would do the same Sunday service. It's not the same people. And so whatever I hear and see on Sunday, on Saturday, I already know what I will get on Sunday. But they don't know it. So they think that when they come for a hazard, it's a time to chat. And then when they are doing something, we carry their phone. When they are even, I've even seen some people, they will be dozing off. The hazard. The hazard. I've seen it, I've seen it all. Praise the Lord. And they argue with each other. They don't even draw a line who is the leader. When their leader is talking, some even are talking within themselves. You can see uh, uh, sometimes Levi with some and two of them will be whispering. Into them, and I say, what a lawlessness. They don't know I see this because they don't know from where I see it. The other day after prayer, I was telling mommy about, I said, uh, you did well with some of the examples you gave. And I said, where are you there? I said, where were you? I say, it's not your business. Praise the Lord. I can be anywhere as long as I'm part of the service. And it's very good like that. Amen? It's very good. So you wouldn't do anything because pastor is there. Be yourself. Me and myself. When you are in a, a church as a worker, you are working with your pastor. You are not working alone by yourself. You are working. You see, when people, when you speak to people, when you speak to people, they are, they will assume that they are hearing pastor directly. You know, because those that walk around pastor should talk like pastor. Simple. 
those that work. And all of you that are workers walk around pastor. That's the truth. You are HOD. Whether he likes it or not, you have access. You have access to your pastor. And so he or she can discuss all the matters and come back to you. But if you are willing and obedient, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You don't work for God grudgingly. It's not by force. Amen. Amen. You need to give yourself unto the Lord. You need to understand the vision of this ministry. And you need to become that vision. And also you become ownership. Take ownership of that vision. Because if it has changed you, it would change those around you. The problem is that you try to change others when it has not changed you. That's the problem. Integrity. Integrity is important in ministry. And I just define to you integrity, doing as you are expected to do. That's it. Ability to be relied upon. I say, I trust this person will follow my instructions. I trust this person will follow my doctrines. Many of you, you are not faithful even as a worker because you always add to what pastor said. And so you are lawless. You are always in a hurry to make it better, to add your own idea. And in adding your own ideas, you depart from the instructions. And the devil will love you for it. It doesn't work like that. It is for that reason, when you are given five minutes, instead of you to do six minutes, do four. For respect to authority. There were things that I read that will humble me. Papa uh, Adeboye, he was going to one of his churches. Redeem church, they invited him. He was going there to preach. And as he was getting there, he was arriving too early. He told the driver to park somewhere while they wait. And he said he has to do that because if he enters into the church, he can distract a lot of people. Of course, he carries a lot of aura as a great man of God. And so he said to the driver, park. And so he said they parked and waited just for the time. And then, when it was time for him to minister, he asked the pastor, how much time do I have? The pastor was shocked. The pastor said, Daddy, <laughs> as long as... He said, no, 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 no. He said, you are in charge of this church. You need to tell me how much time do I have? How much time do I have? The guy was shocked. I read it from Papa Adeboye. He said many ministers don't understand authority. They don't understand authority. You don't get it. And the reason why you don't understand is because you refuse to be taught. Everywhere you have been, you have never been taught. You have never been taught. Somebody said, sit down there and wait for me. He said, okay. You sat. And then I came out. Where is she? Where is he? He went to check the phone. Does it make sense? And then I went back inside. The meeting is over. It has happened to like that for two people. I came out and they were trying to explain that. Even though I still spoke with them, but only briefly, and it wasn't the real thing I wanted to meet them with. Because that's lawlessness. I remember one time, Pastor Chris sent for me. As I went to the White House, so they said that Pastor said I should wait. I sat on that chair. All I could do was I was praying, praying, praying that this meeting will add to my life. I didn't even know that I waited for more than an hour or even close to two hours. I didn't know. You know, I was investing that waiting in the spirit realm. I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I was too busy spiritually pre preparing and building myself. I didn't notice that my pastor delayed. So when pastor came, he said, uh, said, have you been waiting for I said, no, sir, I've not been waiting long. 
Because I didn't know that I'd been waiting long. Some of you will say, Pastor, actually, I've been here for two hours. Pastor, actually, I've been here for two hours. But, but it's okay now, Pastor. It's okay. <laughs> Sit there and wait for me. Pastor entered. You left. You went to check your phone. Why do you need your phone when you come to see Pastor? No, why do you need your phone? Why do you need your phone? No, why do you need your phone? You are coming to see your pastor. Why do you need your phone? Except if that phone is relevant for the meeting. You want to show him something, you want, to, you want you to call somebody. Why do you need your phone? Now I'm asking you. You don't know the signs of lawlessness because you've not been taught. And yet it opens the door. Many of you cannot even speak about what pastor likes, the way pastor wants things to be done. And that's why you cannot follow. Excellence. Detailing. You don't know it. When I go to the building, Engineer Fela is here. When I go to the building, when I ask them to do something, I can step in there and they have done it, but I will look at the environment. I will look at the environment. You've done the thing, you've connected the thing I asked you to connect, but I will look at around. 95% of the time there has been a problem. There has been a problem. The other day, I asked a lot to fix, uh, what was it on the paint floor, uh, you know, socket, right? Okay, so I went up. The socket was actually fixed. But when I looked around, the package, the nylon, and all the things that were used to fix it was just scattered, littered there. And I was sad. Allah is working there. I was sad. Why was I sad? Allah knows that that is my floor. This is pastor's floor. It's not like any other place in the building. That's pastor's floor. And so you bought the thing, you walked on it, and then, and why was I even more sad? Engineer Fela saw it. What happened when I came? Immediately I came, he started picking it. Why did he not pick it before I came? No, why does it have to happen when I showed up? This paint floor is pastor's floor. And so, Engineer Ola did an installation and let the package and the nylon scatter there. And then the site engineer was there. And so he knows that this is pastor's floor. And so when I came now, he was not picking it. And I just smiled. So Jesus said to the disciples, have you been with me for so long and yet you do not know me? And that's the question. Many of you don't know pastor. You don't know pastor. No. Even a Jehovah that has been here with me for over 20 years does not know me. Why? Even though he claims he does, but his work does not show he does. The condition of the sound room, the sound system, the sound I hear, he doesn't know me. And so I resign in frustration. But I'm telling you the truth. And if I'm like that, how is it with God? The, the sound that was coming off from the transmission has been happening for how many weeks? Three weeks, four weeks. All right? It has been happening. And I was saying to myself, how is it that Ajawo, John, uh, Victoria, uh, Wale, Wale just recently joined them, God's power, Paris, how is it that none of these people is picking up these things? I was asking myself, how is it possible that you will be doing something and something is wrong for one week, two weeks, three weeks, the fourth week, it was still bad. And I was asking myself, what kind of mind do they have? Then eventually I have to step out and speak about it. And I said, can't you people sort out this problem? And then I was already angry. I 
I may not stand here when 9.30 comes, but you can be sure that I'm already following service before 9.30. Yes, I'm watching everything. I am part of the service. I also know that we have those that are watching online. You see, the quality of our transmission will not be blamed on you. Even though we have IT department, at the end of the day, pastor is to be blamed. Yes, I'm the pastor of the church. And so, whatever that we transmit, I know I carry the 100% responsibility. It's not the sound guy. It's not the IT guy. It's not anybody else. It is on me. And that's why I continue checking it. And so the question is that, why is it that after so many years, some people, when something is wrong, they can't understand it? Why is it that when people walk, they can't clean up where they have walked? Including John. Why is that when people walk? They can't clean up where they have walked excellently. And they do it here, and when they go outside to walk, they will repeat the same thing. And so they will not get a second opportunity. You may not even do the job perfectly, but the way you clean up the place, and so the place, the guy will say, I like this person. Why are you so Nigerian in application? And why are you so much Christian in what? In attendance. No, which one are we? No, which one are we? You hear the word. You hear the word. But you leave the world. We are not deliverance ministry. We are ministry of excellence. We are ministry of discipline. We are ministry of truth. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of excellence. Praise the Lord. The the place where Victoria used to use as an office, she has gone back to school. She doesn't use it again. But I still use that place. See that. Sometimes when I want to use it, I will see dust all over. Because this is Hamatan period. And I said to myself, how many people pass here? And they know, because it's not their office, but they know that pastor will use this place occasionally, which I do use. I use the office regularly. And so they will pass through. They will go through and through. And nobody will see to clean that place daily because they know that pastor will use the place. So I wonder, how is it in their houses? How is it in their rooms? No, how is it where you are? And you know, I was talking the other day, just a few days ago, upstairs, he says, he said, Daddy, I know that this place, we may have to convert it to a sitting room because you don't like dust. That's an outsider. He said, Pastor, you don't like dust. That's an outsider. What is service unto the Lord? You look at, see the microphone we have here, look at the base. Uh, the fan they used to have here, look at the blade. Simple things. Who are you working for? No, who are you working for? And so, you are there, but you are not learning. You are there, but you are not growing. And so, you make the same mistake over and over again. How can God put you in a higher position? And so, we may complain about government, but if you are in the government, you will do the same thing. Look at what you are doing here. No, look at what you are doing here. Look at what you are doing here. I am very careful to criticize those in government. You know why? I know the struggle I have with the people that are in this government. I know the struggle. To get you to do things the way I believe it should be done is a problem. So how much more? A president is sitting in Abuja and somebody is in uh, Akwa Ibom representing him. 
And the president may never go there throughout the four years of his term. That person has made himself a jungle chief. He will fear nobody. Do you understand how it works? And look at the way you are in this local government called the Church of the Living God. Look at the way you are. And so people say, I've been serving the Lord, I'm not blessed. Ask yourself, are you serving in an acceptable way? If your pastor is asked to give a reference of you, how will he reference you? No, how will his pastor? If your pastor said, truly, he comes to church faithfully and is part of this ministry, yes, and that's it, and he will sign. That is not a reference. Because everybody comes to church. But that's what he can write about you. If they will ask pastor to write about your work, what will pastor write? No. What will pastor write? When there is a problem with sound, sound. The days I was in charge of Pastor Chris sound, when there is a problem with the sound, when there is a problem, after service, we don't go home. We don't go home. We need to sort it out before that. And Ajawu was with me that time. And he knew that discipline. If there's one challenge with sound, after service, you don't go home. And then there will be a problem with sound, problem with transmission. After service, I will purposely call. I say, where is Ajawu? They say, he has gone. I will smile. But he was with me. It was a discipline that I, I followed. Why is he not following it? No, why is he not following it? He was there. He followed me. He knew how I walked. Whether it's Christ Embassy or House on the Rock or in Winners, he was there. He was there. Why is he so different still? The Bible said those that look at the perfect law of liberty continuously you look at it, you follow it continuously. You will be transformed. Why is it that he followed and here to his future? Something is wrong in the followership. Don't you get it? Something is wrong. Jesus said, have you been with me for so long and yet you do not know me? Association does not change you. It's application that changes you. And that is why many wives don't get better because you know they are just a wife they are just an associate of their husband they don't follow the doctrine of their husband they don't follow the teaching of their husband and so they may be married for 40 years they are still who they were they are even worse praise the lord association with the Bible will not change you. It is application of the Bible that changes you. Pastor likes things to be done excellently and timely. You should know that from now. You do something, you clean up the whole environment. You should know that's where pastor likes it. Before I step there, we check the environment. Whether it's the worship team or the ushering team or whichever team, you should know. I look at what you do in your environment. Praise the Lord. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's our purpose. That's our ministry. We are not to create miracle seekers. We are not here to create those that chase for prophetic. Pastor, prof prophesy on me. No, that's not what we are. We are here to make ready a people that wants to serve God, that love God. Like John the Baptist, we are called after the order of John the Baptist. 
which is the order that Jesus Christ our Lord maintained. That is the calling of this ministry. You need to get it. You need to get it. If you are in Christ, how will a demon infect you anyway? No. If you are, Jesus, if you abide in me, gospelology, if you abide in me, and my word abide with you, if you are in Christ, how will demon enter you? No. Acts chapter 17, in him we move, in him we live, in him we have our being. If you are all in him, how can demon enter you? Does it make sense? No. Does it make sense? When you are in Christ, how can demon enter you? It's not possible. And we need to get it. We need to get it. You are an ambassador of the church. Then an ambassador for Christ. As long as you are a worker. You are an ambassador. And therefore, you need to conduct yourself as an ambassador. The way you receive orders that come to church. The way you talk to others that come to church. The way you handle things in the church. That is what makes you an ambassador. Not the length of time. Integrity. Praise the Lord. There has not been any ministry I found myself that by the grace of God, I didn't contribute. I'm not talking about contributing money. That is, you serve. Praise the Lord. We got wedded in a revival assembly. Apostle uh, Anselm Madubuko. I've met him twice on my trip. And I sat with him as my pastor. And I had a great time with him. And I've been to see him. And anytime I see him, I still respect him and I love him and I have greatest regard for him. You know why? There was no place I left in offense or in, uh, 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 what do you call it, anger or, or uh, bitterness and all that. No place, no place like that. No place like that. I go to Christ's embassy. I still have meetings with any of the CS members when it's necessary. Some of you, there are places you can't go back. You can't go back. You can't go back. Praise the Lord. And that is the way it should be. Your life should have a, a, a record that can be checked upon. It was from Revival Assembly. We went into winners. Yes? From winners, we went into uh, Christ Embassy. That's it. Even before Reverend Assembly, it was from Assemblies of God. That's where I got saved. That's where I got, I was born again. That's where I got baptized. From Assemblies of God to Revival Assembly. Amen? From Revival Assembly to Winners. From Winners to Christ Embassy. And from Christ Embassy to where I am today. Many of you traveled that many church in one year. In one year, two years, you've been through four or five churches. I'm talking about my life history ministry. Those are the places I went to. And in all those places, in all those places, <clears throat> when they called me in Assemblies of, of God and I'm about to come and help them with the sound, I was at home because that was part of, partly where I grew up. Yes, that's partly where I grew up. When I go to the village, the church where I go, but if I still go there, if I see what I can add, I will add there because that's part where I grew up. Some of you, you leave, you destroy, you scatter, you say never again. Well, you are angry, you are offended, you are bitter. But what is your life with the church? No. Till today, I can walk to Papa, Bishop Oyedepo, and greet him and shake his hand and walk away. Because I have a relationship. That's the way it should be. 
faithfulness in relationship. Faithfulness in relationship. Praise the Lord. Understand the vision and let that vision change your life. You are here to be equipped for the Lord. We are not a healing ministry. We believe in healing. Anyway, if you are in Christ and apply the word, how are you going to get sick? How? Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Please. Let's be serious. I beg you. Let's be focused. I beg you. HODs, learn to build up your department. A department that does not grow is stagnant. And this year, HODs that don't build their department will be removed. Seriously. Praise the Lord. And I want you to know also that from this month of February, Pastor Isaac has resumed fully as uh, admin pastor of God's family church. You see me here? Praise the Lord. So that is his official position now. And so a lot of things will be communicated through him to all of you. And I've told him to create leaders uh, uh, group have you done it? Yeah, to do, so that things can be communicated to leaders only. Include uh, Pastor Lovett and uh, Deaconess Marion. <clears throat> Amen. Any HOD that does not build his or her department Grow it. Grow your department. We know something is wrong with you. This year we must grow. And you see, personal growth brings department growth. Department growth brings church growth. And we should follow it. Praise the Lord. I want us to know that there is a great joy in serving the Lord. There is a great joy, especially when you serve correctly. Amen? When you serve the right way. And it is important that you serve the right way. Because when Paul talks about Timothy, he talks about him with great joy. With great joy. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 10. I want to close with this. Second Timothy Chapter 3, verse 10. Are we there? Shall we read it together? But you have carefully trained. Praise the Lord. But you have carefully, not carelessly, not carefreely, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance. Every HOD should copy this out. That's what I expected of you. Do you understand? That is what is expected of you. And there is nobody that will follow like this and God will not bless that person. Even if pastor does not say thank you to you, heaven will thank you. 
Even if pastor does not remember you, heaven will remember you. The Bible says it is God that rewards every man. It is God that will still put it in the heart of a man to bless you. Paul, writing to his faithful son, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance. Follow this and you will not miss it. Praise the Lord. Follow this and you will not miss it. Rise on your feet.